Greetings, salutations, respect, and love. I am Scott, and you are in the Prague Corner. Oh, today. Oh, man, I'm excited. I've been talking about this record for a month now. I interviewed the lead singer, Patrick Lundstrom, uh, last week. And here we are. I'm reviewing the brand new album from Ritual, The Story of Mr. Bogged. Part one, oh, this is their fifth album, but it is their first on Charisma, their first on an actual label that can maybe even do a little something for them. Their first album came out in 1995, the self-titled album Ritual. Um, it came out on Musea, and uh, ever since, they've been uh, on Tempest Fugit. They put out uh, their second album four years later called Superb Birth in 1999. Four years later, their third album came out, uh, Think Like a Mountain in 2003, and then they carried on the four-year cycle. 2007 saw the release of their masterpiece, uh, The Hemulic Voluntary Band. It's been 17 years since that album came out, man, and uh, we were wondering if we'd ever get another Ritual album, but here we are 17 years later, and we've got the story of Mr. Bogged Part 1. This was preceded uh, in 2020 by a little EP called glimpses of Mr. Bog. There were four songs on there, three from part one and uh, one song from part two. So I knew three of these 10 songs. There are 10 songs on this album. It's like 46 minutes long. There are no epics on here. We didn't need an epic. We had a great epic on the last album, right? Uh, the Dangerous Journey was just amazing. So who is Ritual? Well, it's been the same four guys for every album from their inception. It's Patrick Lundstrom, uh, the singer and uh, guitar player, who is also part of Kaipa, uh, John Gamble, uh, uh, Frederick Lindquist, and Johan Norgren on drums. Uh, the same four guys on all five albums, so that's always exciting. Ritual is obviously a band uh, indebted to, well, their name is Ritual, so maybe there's a connection to a certain symphonic prog band from the 70s. I don't know. I don't hear a whole bunch of yes in their sound, but, you know, they're indebted to the 70s, absolutely. But this is a band that brings a lot of weird stuff to the mix, too, in terms of instrumentation and influences. Uh, besides the Scandinavian folk they throw in there, there's a lot of Baltic and Turkish kind of sounds. Very, very cool. You've got stuff like Irish bazookis, the mandala, a mandolin, a dulcimer, recorders, tin whistles, nickel harpas. I mean, all kinds of instruments uh, to make this sound really, really different and cool. They got their own thing going on. Absolutely. And these guys just played the uh, final night of the Prague over at Lorelei. Uh, where I guess I've heard, I've seen some of the YouTube clips, man. They sounded like those cats were on fire. Um, yeah, there is going to be a part two, but talking to Patrick, uh, he's telling me not to hold my breath for 2025, that it's probably going to be 2026, but that's okay, man. If you put out a record this good, I'm going to allow you to be a little bit lazy in its follow-up. Uh, let's take a look at the guys in the band there. Oh, yeah. What an amazing album. You got this really nice inner sleeve with all the lyrics. And you're going to want the lyrics on this because uh, Frederick writes all the lyrics here. I guess he and Patrick came up with the story. And uh, the lyrics are actually some of the best I've heard in a long, long time. So the album starts with a song called The Hasty Departure. Starts with a string quartet where you got two violins, a viola, and a cello doing stuff that sounds like it could have been right off of uh, acquiring the taste from Gentle Giant. And then all of a sudden it starts rocking out in a 6-8 figure where you've got a, a little bit of chromaticism in the chord progression. It goes from a, a, a C minor to a G, you know, so they're toggling back and forth between that C note and the and the B. So it drops down a half a step, then it goes A7 to, to E7 to A minor. So again, you got that half step thing from the G sharp to the A. So we're playing with the chromaticism. So you're really cool, uh, really awesome chord progressions. And then the song just starts going crazy with all this uh, crazy prog rock freak out stuff going on. And right in the heart of it, man, you're in 6-8. They do one measure of a fourplet, you know, a quadruplet in there where you're playing four beats instead of six. They do it exactly one time, man. It sounds so amazing. I just love it. Listen for it. Really one of the highlights of the year for me. Uh, you get a whole church organ section then running through some chords as we go back from major to minor. And then you got another like little acoustic section where Patrick's uh, singing about Mr. Bogged, you know, 
know, leaving town, uh, getting the heck out of the busy city. Uh, and then it's it finished with, with the rockin' section again. Just a great song. It's the longest song, I think, on here. I don't know. There's one other song that breaks six minutes. It's either the longest or the second longest song, but what a great way to start, man. Imagine, if you will, a teeming town with all its streets and facilities. Then imagine, if you care, the town square with its amenities, but it's late in the night and there's no one in sight. There we see the town hall and the church and other striking authorities. A certain building catch our eyes. It's palace-like. Oh, my. It's a sight to see. And in front of the gates, a smart carriage awaits. Oh, yeah, we're talking about uh, you know, horse and buggy stuff here. So uh, we are timing ourselves. I guess the story's taking place in uh, the late uh, to middle to late 19th century, maybe early, early 20th century, before there were cars running around all over the place. So he and his driver, Parkhurst, uh, take off. They're, they're leaving the city. They're getting the heck out of Dodge. Uh, and we're going to find out why Mr. Bogged is so uh, upset and not happy with his life. Uh, so Parkhurst and uh, Bogged end up in this inn the first night. It's uh, the end of the Haunted Owl. It's the second song. And this song is the exact moment I knew this album was special, man. It is so great. It starts out with Patrick's acoustic guitar playing away in E. And you hear all this clinking of, uh, you know, flatware and silverware in the background like you're in some busy inn. And this weird percussion, which uh, almost sounds like the plates clinking and stuff it's just great and then finally the chorus hits and uh, Patrick is singing through a megaphone all right you good people all gather around so the innkeeper brings everybody into the backyard and he brings this owl that's locked up in a cage hear the owl sing and that's the big uh, event of the night and uh, Parkhurst and Bog to go back to their room. They're not happy at all. They think this is a bunch of crap. So what do they do? They sneak out in the middle of the night and the music gets really exciting. And oh man, it's so good. Johan's drumming just going nuts as Parkhurst and uh, Bog go out to the backyard. Let's save the owl. And oh man, the theremin starts kicking in like the owl's crazy scream. Oh, this song's amazing. It is so good. Oh, words can't even describe how good the first two songs on this album are, I'm just excited even thinking about it. The third song is called Dreams in a Brogham. And this is a short little piece. We're in a Lydian mode here. Uh, a Brogham, by the way, is a uh, carriage that was developed uh, like in the 1860s or something for the Richie Rich, you know, a little elevated uh, version of a carriage. Actually had windows so they could see where they were going. Anyway, like I said, this is a song in Lydian mode. Um, we're in five throughout, but then we throw in an occasional measure of six in the front end. There's two particular melodies on this song. The first one requires that measure of six thrown in all the time. And then we get to the second half of the song and we dispense with all the measures of six and we've got a second theme rolling in. We got whistles and all this crazy kind of sounding instrumentation. It's just a really lovely ride through the countryside uh, in a brogham, whatever that is. It's just a great, great little track. And that leads you to the rockinest song on here. It's called Chichikov Bogged. It's four minutes long and it starts with Patrick, uh, you know, playing his guitar in G, talking about Bogd. And we're going back in time. We're going to tell you a little bit about the beginning, the origin story of Bogd. He was a kid that was raised in privilege, and uh, he was an odd child. He had a fancy for the wild, I guess. But the chorus kicks in, and it is so good, man. It's just amazing. You get a really crazy progged out middle section here uh, where you can't really figure out what time signature you're in. Trust me, you're in four all the way through, but it doesn't sound like it. This song's great. This song is just amazing. And then side one ends with uh, Mr. Tilly and his gang. And this is uh, kind of a circus romp. And this is where uh, the bass player, Frederick, his bass playing is just incredible here. We've all heard circus sounding songs in Prague. It's like an old trope, right? Everybody wants to bring that, you know, circus waltz feel, you know, with the organ in the background and stuff. I've never heard it done better than this, man. I've never heard it done better than this. And it doesn't hurt that the lyrics are outstanding on here. Just so good. Greetings, my friends. A good day to you. I'm Mr. Tilly, and this is my crew. The fish beers, the skirt men, performers and poets, musicians de genre, progressite. <laughs> He's even giving a shout out to Prague Rock and the lyrics. How great is that? Just a fun, fun song. Proven that Frederick is one of the most unheralded bass players of all time. Just so good on this song. 
Side two starts out really, really nice with another instrumental piece called uh, Through a Rural Landscape. It's only three minutes long, but it starts out with the tinkling ivories of uh, one John Gamble. This is his piece. I guess he wrote this one. Uh, it's a piano piece in G with a really nice bass line, and it just kind of coasts along, almost like Bo Hansen joined Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. As the song goes, it, it feels more and more like you're uh, escaping into side two of Tarkus. Uh, and and I'm, I'm waiting for those close, dissonant notes on the keepers, and there they are, exactly like Keith Emerson would do. What an amazing piece. And then there's one measure where uh, uh, Frederick's bass follows John on the keyboard just for one measure in unison. It's really great. It's fabulous. I love this song. Really, really great. And then it leads you to uh, the next piece, which is uh, one of the songs that's going to capture a lot of people's attention. I think the Feline Companion, man. This song is great. It, it keeps the piano motif going, but this time we're in G minor and uh, we're talking about Bob. He's with Parkhurst, then he sees this woman and a cat, so he pulls over, asks, hey, is there anything I could do for you? Um, massive Mellotron in this song, man. I was wondering when we were going to get some Mellotron. Yeah, and then you got this real deceptive kind of beat as another section comes in. You think you're on one, but you're really on two, so finally it gets going and you realize where you are, and that Mellotron just creeps up and just creates the most haunting atmosphere ever. Such a huge sound on this song. It's not quick. It's a real mid-tempo kind of thing, but it just creates so much tension. It's so great. At the end of the song, uh, he gives uh, the woman and her cat a big sack of money. And so they're so happy that the... Uh, uh, the woman gives uh, Bogd uh, uh, the cat bell, and all you need to do is ring it three times, and the cat will come to your aid. I'm thinking somewhere in part two, maybe we'll get uh, a little bit more of that. Next up is called Read All About It, and this is a real frenzy, crazy, syncopated romp. It's, it's an amazing song. Starts out with uh, Patrick's son. What's his son's name? I want to get his son's name right. Uh... Let's see here. What if Fabian Fabian Lundstrom plays the uh, the newsboy here? Oh man, there's a section on here where we hit the really low bass note, and uh, it's not a bass doing it. I think it's the lowest note on a clavinet. It just reverberates everything. It's so cool. I don't think I've ever heard that before in a song, and that's what I love, man. When I hear something I've never heard before, right here in this song. Oh, it's so cool. And then you get this real like heavy metal like section. You're like, what are these guys doing here? This doesn't sound good. It doesn't sound right. And then the Greek chorus comes in, man, gentle giant style. You got all these voices, uh, which I guess are like the voices of the public wondering what's going on. Bogged and Sun Industries was recently accused of derelicts and atrocities and general misuse, unauthorized deforestation, illegal, so it seems, on and on, all these voices going on in a gentle giant fashion. It's awesome, it's so weird, it's so cool. It blows my mind. Uh, but then we get into the penultimate song, which is the second longest song on the album. It's called Forgotten Qualities. Real peaceful, it's mainly just uh, Patrick and his guitar, but it is so peaceful and beautiful. Uh, talking about how he's found this beautiful place and he just wants to chill in a meadow in a glen or whatever and you know enjoy the sun and the birds chirping and all that kind of stuff uh beautiful song though i just absolutely love it didn't like it at first i thought it kind of brought the album down but then when i realized how beautiful this song is and the melody just would not leave my head yeah yeah it's a great song i was dead wrong again finally the album ends on a song called the three heads of the well the weirdest song on the album for sure it's all like turkish instrumentation and baltic kind of stuff balkan uh music with the all those weird instruments i described earlier it's really bizarre i guess they go to a well and they see these heads floating up and they start talking to them or whatnot and that ends part one in a really bizarre strange fashion uh I absolutely love it, though. It, it is absolutely perfect for leading you up to what's going on on part two, which I couldn't be... <coughs> <coughs> yeah, I couldn't be more excited. But I'm getting all choked up just talking about Ritual, the story of Mr. Bogd, uh, 
Best album I've heard all year. So yeah, I certainly have buried the lead here uh, on purpose. You guys know what I'm giving this thing. You guys know what this score is going to be. I'm giving this sucker a perfect score. This thing's a 10 out of 10. Absolutely. I love it. Anyway, guys, um, that was something I've been meaning to do for a long, long time. Next week, I'm going to be reviewing the new album from Mir, which is called Wheels Within Wheels. And then the week after that, we're going to be looking at the brand new Two Spork album as we carry on with Charisma Month. Charisma Records is right now the greatest record label in the entire world. Anything they put out is highly recommended. But this one here, man, the story of Mr. Bogged Part 1, showing the infinite genius of Charisma signing these guys. Hopefully their back catalog will get scooped up by Charisma or at least get the rights to them so we can put more vinyl out. Anyway, guys, I love you. Peace in the Middle East. Free Tibet, free the Ukraine, and God save the king. Save King Charles. King Chucky the Third needs your saving. Oh, yeah, he does. That boy's got the cancer, so bring him, bring him, bring him to America. Yeah, we got him. We're going to take care of him. We got them good doctors, and we got prayer warriors. Oh, King Chucky's not doing so good. Oh, we're going to take care of him. Thoughts and prayers of the king. Anyway, guys, I love you. You know what's going to happen next. I can't leave you without dancing with some snakes. Woo, yeah, we're going to dance with some snakes with King Chucky, and he's going to be just fine. I love you guys. I'll see you. Peace.